Hello YouTube, it is Chris here, and in today's episode, we are gonna be pitting a $1 knife against a $600 knife. So stick with me. Welcome back everybody and thank you for sticking with me. Like I said, today we're going to be pitting a $1 knife against a $600 folder. And there was only one place on the planet that I could think of going to finding such a cheap knife. Walmart! <laughs> Well, this is about the cheapest knife we can absolutely find. This knife costs about $1.97, but we don't feel it's gonna do very well in the tests. So we went ahead and picked up four of them. So Boom, we are back from our trip to Walmart. And like I said, we uh, didn't feel that these knives would be up to snuff to some of the harsher testing that we'll be putting that $600 knife through, which is the Cold Steel 4 Max. Now I know technically these are like legally and technically under two dollars but we've gotten dozens of reports over the weeks of showcasing these particular knives in our walmart videos that they can be found in multiple locations for 99 cents each so the very first test we are going to perform is an edge sharpness test with a piece of paper something very simple we'll go ahead and start with the 600 dollars knife oh yeah nice and sharp so this thing will be ready for some work and we're gonna go ahead and set this one that's open off to the side and we'll use this one. These are straight out of the box. This is exactly how we're going to be testing them. Now, a few things we wanna note off the bat and the reason why we picked this blade is one, it's a lockback design, but uh, in most cases you can find it for a dollar, dollar ninety seven. But um, it's a full size knife, but it doesn't have a pocket clip on it. It is like really wobbly and there is play of both sides right off the bat. But like I said, it's a dollar knife. I mean, we can't expect a whole lot, but we can check the original edge on this. Just doesn't seem too uh, too good at the moment. So uh, yeah, we think we know who the clear winner is for the original edge sharpness test. Um, these are right out of the box, so let's keep it going. All right, so the first test we're gonna be doing is with the Duke Cordage, and we're gonna be testing the initial edge on this blade and this blade cuts really really well so we're going to be testing the one dollar knife we don't hold has some serious resistance on this thing we'll try the normal cutting surface i can't yeah it's like ripping and tearing it's not it's just fraying it. it's not actually cutting I think I'm gonna break the locking mechanism. <sighs> yeah, this thing can't even cut, barely can cut paracord. I feel like this thing was just gonna, yeah, look. That locking mechanism is already wanting to pop out. If you look really carefully, and I put too much pressure on it, but it actually went a little bit higher than that. It was like up to here. So we're already almost disengaging the lock just with paracord. Now, the $600 knife. Oh yeah, this thing should have no trouble at all. Next on the list is seat belt material. So if you had this knife on you in your pocket and you were you stuck in a vehicle and you're in an accident, can this rip and cut seat belt material? Kind of. You hear that? So that was pretty difficult. Six hundred dollar knife. Big, big difference. We're gonna be grabbing some cardboard and trying to just dismantle the cardboard. It's kind of difficult. This has a mostly serrated blade, which is not a good thing. But like I said, it's a one dollar knife. Can't expect too much from it. So yeah, that's what happens when you live about 10 miles away from a military base, is you get fighter jets flying over your head. Constantly. Ugh. That test was a little better, but we used mostly the serrations. It's 
do. So yeah, this is kind of difficult to do with this one dollar knife. God dang it. So yeah. Six one dollar knife. So next test we're going to be doing are a piercing test through copy paper. Like I said, this has a lockback design, but it's kind of janky. So that's why we have gloves on to try to be a little safer. But uh, there's no guarantee this thing won't uh, close on us. That's why hopefully if it closes, it'll close on this rubber part and give us a little bit of protection. Too bad. Next up for the piercing test is a $600 knife. Yeah. We're just going to be doing some uh, shaving with it to see if we can get some curls for them. You know, just, just a little bit of interesting, different tasks. So not something you would typically do with a folding knife, but it's okay. Wow, this is, there's a lot of resistance going into this. This is what happens when you don't have a sharp knife. It's getting easier. I think it's because we're developing a flat surface. Now we're gonna take a different piece of wood. The first piece, with six on our knife. Oh man, this thing's gliding off of this thing. It's making crazy curls. Oh yeah, that was a lot more pleasant. So this is the $1 knife. Come on. I think you might be able to do it. Striking a ferro rod, this thing is crazy. So yeah, that was not easy to do. Oh yeah, I still got a whole strand left. So yeah, that's a fail on that part. All right, we'll take a fresh piece of this nine line rope for the six hundred dollar knife. Done. All right, the next test we're gonna do is some stock soft target stabbing with the one dollar knife. We have it about the full size of the length of the knife. So let's pray that I uh, don't get uh, hurt. So we picked up all but two layers. It's not bad, not bad at all. Got stuck though. Next test we're gonna do is with the $6 knife. All but two layers again. So we are back here with the $1 knife and the $600 knife. Now we are not going to be doing any push cutting because with that huge thick nylon rope that you saw, that knife couldn't cut it. So why try to do push cuts that are just going to break my wrist and aggravate me knowing it can't do it. So what we're going to do is a test that actually has me the most nervous for this knife 
is we're gonna be actually testing the tip strength and the torquing on the pivot screw, which we think at this point it might break because we've already had a lot of issues with it so far. So um, that's why we have gloves on. We also have uh, cut resistant liners underneath this. So hopefully uh, we won't run into any injuries during this test. So first up is the $1 knife. So as we can see, I'm gonna try to get a little closer so if I can zoom in on this for you guys. But yeah, tip actually like bent that way and then the tip itself was bent and crushed. Not to mention the blade play is significant. I mean, look, you can see it starting to physically Separate. You can say you can see daylight through the handles. So yeah, this is no longer a safe knife to use. Next up, the six hundred dollar knife. Not a single piece of blade damage. <laughs> this thing is not moving. This is rock solid. All right, well, upon further inspection, I was able to take my gloves off and we were looking over this knife. I want you to see this. This is very eye-opening about the heat treat or lack thereof on this knife. So if you look, see those flat spots? That was what the cardboard and the rope was doing. And that's, and look, all the blade rolling right here. I mean, this knife literally got hammered just with cardboard, paper, and some of that stuff right there. And then soft, soft wood completely destroyed this knife. Well, I hope you guys found that testing as eye-opening, as fun, entertaining, as enlightening as we did. Um, we suspected our uh, $600 knife to vastly outperform the $1 knife, but a lot of people wanted us to bring this to the channel, so we thought we'd do it in a very fun way. Um, we've seen the like $200 knife versus $1 knife, a $400 knife versus a $1 knife challenges before, but we've never seen anybody do a $600 knife, but we've never also seen anyone do it against folding knives. But something I do want to show you guys right here is nothing, but maybe that little smudge right there, but nothing is wrong with this blade. But as a $600 knife, which the street price is about $350 to $400 depending on where you go, this you should expect nothing but excellence from a blade you're paying that much for for premium materials. But then as we surmised from a one dollar knife we'll zoom in a little closer and try to brighten this thing up for you zoom in here bam so yeah you can see look at that all that flattening that's crazy that nylon rope and cardboard did that that's just absolute insanity that means this blade is not even heat treated they're not even heat treating this blade and yeah it's like a butter knife right now i mean it's just one huge freaking roll you can see that right there. It's just one giant roll. And then the tip itself actually physically bent that way. And then the tip, not even sharp. It won't even poke me. That huge separation right there. I mean, that's, yeah. So if you wanna uh, trust your hands and your fingers and stuff like that to a blade like that, go for it. And as a full disclaimer, which is sad that we have to do that here on YouTube, but this was all for fun. We just took a little janky $1 knife we knew it was gonna suck and just have some fun with it against an, a freaking huge monster. Now to end this video on a really happy note, uh, we wanna show you a, if you pay just a little bit more, you can get a knife that will actually perform solidly well that we've already tested here on the channel. So these knives that I'm about to show you are Haas knives. You can find these on Amazon. We've reviewed these before. Get this janky piece of crap out of the way. Um, you can find these blades. These are ten to fifteen dollar knives. Now, generally, we don't like to um, we don't bring a lot of really cheap stuff to the channel um, because we want to make sure you can trust your life to them. But these do pretty darn well for light duty. 
as a beater knife, these are really good blades. And all of these average for about $10 to $15 a piece. So if you're looking for a blade that will do some work, don't go and spend a dollar. Be willing to throw down at least 10 to 15 bucks for a blade if you're gonna go super, super crazy, insanely budget friendly and you just have to have a knife and you don't wanna save up for something better. Definitely this is a route you can go and I'll drop some Amazon links down in the description box below. But I hope you guys enjoyed this fun, hilarious, very, very bantery video. But before we go, I definitely want you guys down to drop in the comment section below and let us know what you think of this knife, what, you, what your thoughts are on the Cold Steel 4 Max, and how you like the Haas knives. Also, if you guys want us to do any more $1 versus blah 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 challenges, you know, a uh, very very cheap item versus a really expensive item, if we have it and can bring it into the channel somehow, we definitely are interested in doing that. So drop down in the comments and let me know what you would like to see next. But that just about does it for now. I hope you guys have an absolute wonderful day. I'm out.